The security was unbelievably oppressive. There was a security guard everywhere following you all the time. Uh, you, there was never any free discussion allowed, which is the basis of science. Recently, Lazar caused a sensation when he revealed that he'd been ordered to investigate the propulsion systems of captured alien spacecraft. My work involved the back engineering of an extraterrestrial craft, specifically the propulsion and power source. The UFOs are very typical. As far as a typical UFO is, it's two inverted dishes, two inverted pie plates, if you wish, and with a, a hump on the top. Metallic looking, no wings, no fins, no visible propulsion source. Inside, they're very sparse. Uh, if you come in the main entryway, you'll see three seats, the central reactor and waveguide that goes to the ceiling, uh, the three gravity amplifiers surrounding it, and you'll really see just about nothing else. The authorities immediately denied his claims, and now he says they've tried to erase his identity from all official records. George Knapp is a well-respected investigative reporter with KLAS-TV. He broke the story, including the claim that Lazar worked at Los Alamos in New Mexico, where the atomic bomb was developed. How did these craft get into the hands of the U.S. government? I really have no idea how the craft got there. I don't believe there were crashes because the craft weren't damaged. Uh, and that's about all that I can say. How do you know, though, that these were extraterrestrial craft? First of all, we were back engineering the technology, which means we were taking a finished product and trying to figure out how it was originally designed and developed. Uh, second of all, the technology that we're dealing with doesn't exist. Did you ever see them fly? Well, they were frequently tested. They were tested normally on Wednesday nights when the traffic was lowest in the area. I saw one test close up and uh, several tests at a distance of about 15 miles. Las Vegas for a visit, Lazar recalls why he came forward in the first place. He had traveled to the S-4 base only a handful of times, but began to get scared. I began to get worried in that, boy, they've given me all this classified information. They're not calling me anymore. They won't take my phone calls. And in the meantime, apparently, they're deciding what to do with me. Look how bright it's getting. Look at it now. For a variety of personal reasons, Lazar couldn't keep the story to himself. He shared his tale with John Lear and Gene Huff. They and a few others made treks out to the outskirts of S-4 because Lazar said he'd learned when the test flights of the saucer would take place. Three weeks in a row, a glowing object appeared over the mountain. Look how bright it's getting. Look at it now. And just a few minutes ago, we saw one of the government uh, uh, extraterrestrial UFOs. The time when Bob said there would be a test, there was a strange light jumping around in the sky above the location where he said it would be at the time and date he said it would be. Lazar has more than his share of critics, including the poobahs of the UFO community who think he made it up. And he has holes in his background that have yet to be filled. But to date, no one has yet been able to explain how he knew those test flights would take place out there. Look, it, it, the stuff I saw there was the most unbelievable, literally, because it... it it defied what what we knew as physics and uh, at least I thought it did and maybe what we knew was <laughs> a little incorrect Out. I did a lot of checking on Bob I tried to meet with him twice I was supposed to on one occasion and he didn't go along uh, I checked at MIT I checked at Caltech neither one ever heard of him you have a W2 for a record uh, that uh, shows that he worked in the United States Department of Naval Intelligence. And I said, I'd like a verification of where this location is. It's a classified zip code. And the Navy officer said, just a minute, and made a phone call. He said, you know, the Admiral would like to see you. So I go into this Admiral's office, and he said, Sergeant, if you ever come in this office again with something like this, I'll have you court-martialed. Now get out of my office and get out of there now. If his W-2 was phony, why did this admiral have a hissy fit over it? 115 is strictly an extraterrestrial material. Uh, it probably occurs naturally in some other places, maybe other star systems. Uh, you know, some people not familiar with science or chemistry say, well, that's ridiculous. All the elements occur on Earth, you know. Uh, but that's not true. There are elements on the periodic chart that aren't found on Earth understand that he willingly agreed to take a lie detector test requested and independently arranged by a Las Vegas reporter. Terry Tabernetti is the ex-cop who administered the test. If he's lying, 
uh, he ought to be in Hollywood because he gave absolutely no physiological indications of attempting deception. He never deviated. We covered it several different ways. I asked the same question several different ways, and his answers were always the same. Hooking up, going through the test, then started the emotional roller coaster that I experienced that night. And it's something that uh, I can honestly say has changed my whole outlook on things. About halfway through that test, I'm looking down and all of a sudden the realization sets in that I'm looking at a probable, truthful uh, result. And I mean, I'm getting chills right now talking about it because that's what I got. On every chart that I did, the one relevant question that was the same with every test was uh, the last one. Have you deliberately lied to any question concerning uh, the UFO information you've given me? And uh, his answer of no was indicated as being truthful on the charts. So whatever he told me that night, Bob Lazar truly believes to be 